God bless you and welcome to another episode of God at Work. It is so good to have you here with us. And today our subtitle is Hope is Alive. And you'll see from the story that we're going to tell here in a few minutes exactly why that's the subtitle. It, as you saw in the thumb, thumbnail, we're dealing with a very, very you know, poor area of the city. And this pastor friend of mine that's going to be here as a guest with me this morning, you can see the sign there in the, in the thumbnail where it said Street Church. That was their church for many, many years, but it just had a massive fire that completely burned them out just a few weeks ago, a month, just over a month ago. And so Christina Dawson will be my guest this morning. But this church was actually started by a Pastor Randy and Cheryl Barnett's and back in 1993. And way back in 93, Randy came out to the church that I was pastoring in New West because we had a large feeding program there as well. And he wanted to see how we were doing what we were doing and how we managed to get the supplies that we needed and everything else. So we had a lot of discussions over it. And then they started their work down there in the downtown east side. And then, not, not too long ago, Pastor Randy passed away. And the, my guest today is the one that's taken over as the lead pastor of that church. There's a picture here of Pastor Christina Dawson. There she is. And she is now the lead pastor. But she actually graduated from the First Nations Bible College held there at the Street Church. She was a graduate from their school and now is the lead pastor of the Street Church. But, um, you know, I was thinking, looking at the subject. For many years, Vancouver, Canada has been listed as one of the top cities in all of North America. The most well, in North America, it's listed as the top most desirable place to live. It's listed in the top five in the world. But people don't realize that there's a whole other world there needing help. And that's exactly what Christina and her team are doing. But we're going to open with a song here that Jerry wrote. It's called Come to the Table of Grace. Come to the table of grace To the hungry he's calling Draw near and partake Out from the highways, the byways and lands Enter into the goodness he's planned Come to the table that's set There's a bountiful feast with no price to be met Hungry and thirsty, come taste Taste and see how he loves you today If you hear, if you will, come He is here, here for you, come He waits for you, calls to you, come to He's the way, He is truth, come He's the life you need today, come He's the start of all you'll need, come and see Come to the table that's set To the hungry He's calling, draw near and partake out from the highways, the byways and lands Enter into the goodness He's planned Won't you come to the table that's set? There's a bountiful feast with no price to ye net Ye hungry and thirsty, come taste Taste and see how He loves you there in your head come he wants 
wants to live in your heart to come He signals you, calls to you Come to me He wants to talk to you today Come He wants to save your life today Come And he is what you'll always need Come and see Come to the table the hungry he's calling draw near and partake out from the highways the byways and lands enter into the goodness he's planned won't you come to the table that's set come to the table there's a bountiful feast with no price to be met the hungry and thirsty come take Taste and see how he loves you today Come to the table of grace To the hungry he's calling Draw near and partake Out from the highways, the byways and lands Enter into the goodness he's planned Won't you come to the table that's set up there's a bountiful feast with no price to be met Be hungry and thirsty, come taste Taste and see how he loves you today All ye hungry and thirsty, come taste Taste and see how he loves you today All you hungry and thirsty, come taste and see how he loves you today. You know, and that's really what Christina and their ministry are, are doing down on the downtown east side of Vancouver. They are reaching out and loving with no price to be met, as Jerry said in the song. Those that a lot of people will not reach out to. Those that a lot of people will not extend a hand of love, a hand of grace, a hand of mercy too. But you know, it's the heart of God. In, in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 40, it says, and the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. And every single hot dog that's served, every single hand that is extended, is being extended to Jesus and his love to them from him directly. So Christina Dawson, Pastor Christina Dawson is my guest today. And Jerry, could you bring her in, please? Hi, Christina. Hi. It's really good to have you with me today. And especially taking time, I know your schedule's pretty busy with all that you've got going on down there right now. <clears throat> but I just want you to have a little bit of a chance to tell as we carry on in this program what's been happening and what your needs are right now but i want to show a picture here this is a sanctuary in the building um, that the street church met in right from the very beginning as well as the first nations bible college met there now christy you graduated from the first nations bible college didn't you yes i did hmm. yeah what, what did what was your degree it was a. Uh... I graduated with um the pastoral training and and the whole uh, the whole program that Randy had uh, developed for the Bible College, uh, and it it was meant to be a three year program. People were meant to finish it in three years, but I was able to finish it in two years. I was able to graduate in, in two years, and my purpose was to. Uh, come to Bible college and learn about God and learn about Jesus, learn about the Bible. What is the Bible all about? That was where my heart was. 
Oh, that's wonderful. And then you got involved in the ministry there for a while as well, down in the street yeah. church, correct? And, and you were at being um and at part of the program was being the an intern uh mm -hmm. student being an uh what they called a pastor in charge it meant that we learned how to oversee services and, and conduct services and stuff like that. So so that was part of the the work that I learned to do there at Street Church was more of a real training ground for myself. And uh, when I graduated, um, like I said, my whole purpose was just to come to know the Bible and know the Trinity in the Bible. And then, but Randy and Cheryl both encouraged me to uh, get licensed and ordained and that was far from my mind. I I never thought of doing anything like that. Like when they said you can become a pastor and I said, No, I don't want to be a pastor. <laughs> I know that feeling. I said that same thing. <laughs> but you know <laughs> I did. I said that same thing way back. I, I like doing the administrative stuff. I like being behind the scenes. I don't want to be pastoring. But God yeah. had other plans for both of us. Oh yeah. You know, there's, there's a great he picture here. That. Yeah. There's a great picture here of the street church where mm -hmm. um, that's where you had your dinners regularly. You're, you fed the people regularly. And I always laugh yeah. because down there they called you the hot dog church. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the church still where do. I was pastoring. Yeah. Where I was pastoring in New West and we had our feeding program. We had a drop in where the, daily that people could come in every single day all day long mm. and get something to get in out of the cold. And, and we served them sandwiches and soups and all that, but sandwiches, you know, we get all those nice ham and cheese and tomatoes and all that kind of stuff, yeah. but they wanted peanut butter and jam every <laughs> time. Can I, can I have peanut butter and jam? And we'd have nice ham and cheese and can I have peanut yeah. butter? And so we became known as the peanut butter and jam church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right on. We were the, yeah. we were uh, the peanut butter and jam church. So. Oh, wow. Well, hot dogs the, uh, there for so many years. About 100 to 200 those, people a night, was it? Yeah. There's those young people in the pictures there. Are my, one's my granddaughter and the other one's my daughter. Oh, in wonderful. The right yeah, there, they, yeah. Yeah, they That's come neat. on Fridays to uh, volunteer to help, to help serve the food. And, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I'm glad but to have know, them on. For years, you guys served every single day. I know that for a long time. And yeah. then it had to get cut back with the pandemic and all that type of thing. But, you know, I remember when I first came back from pastoring in Hawaii, um, we the church that I was pastoring in New West, we did a huge Christmas dinner every year. We, You know, we were serving hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people every Christmas dinner with full turkey dinner and all the trimmings that went with it and, and Christmas gifts for everybody. And I really missed it when I got back from Hawaii because I didn't have my own mm -hmm. church building at that time. And I talked with Randy. And so for about four years, we came in and did the Christmas dinner in at the street yeah, church. I remember and, and here's that. one of the pictures. See, we had the balloons mm -hmm. and the tablecloths all set. Yeah. Like, you know, you and I, if we went in, to a restaurant we'd expect to have it nicely set up and everything else and so we did that we wanted them to feel special and we had christmas gifts for everybody but then yeah. i realized you know when canada day would come about you know everybody run in in canada celebrates around canada day they have parties and beach yeah. parties and meet your family but the people down there on the street they didn't have that so we decided one year that we were gonna do something special for canada day as well and so we didn't do yeah. turkey. We did a ham, ham dinner that night, made it something special <laughs> for them. So they felt that they yeah. were also special and we're celebrating on Canada Day. But then that carried on and you guys did that for so long down there, reaching out. Now, Christina, what was your background that got you involved in wanting? To, did you come from a, what type of background did you come from? Oh, um, before I even came to street church. Uh, I was homeless for about a month. And at that time, uh, I, uh, I was an alcoholic and I, a truck, I used drugs as well. And I even, uh, sold some drugs when we were living on the Island. And, um, uh, so those, those are the kind of things I went through and being an alcoholic was, uh, 
and didn't realize how hard it was on my life until I sobered up. And then mm -hmm. um, uh, coming to street church, so, you know, like listening to the scriptures, listening to the testimonies, listening to the music and things like that, it really touched my heart. And um, there were times when I would hear a song and I would think, how can they sing like that? You know, because I was a lost child and I didn't understand the language, you know, the language of, of, of uh, the, the Christian language, I'll say. You know, Christian was, ease, as we call it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I used to hear this, here we are to worship, here we are to bow down. And that really touched my heart. <laughs> and I have a funny story about Pastor Randy. When uh -huh. I first met Pastor Randy, well, I didn't meet him yet, but I seen him up on the platform there singing praise and worship songs, and he had really long hair. He had <laughs> long hair. And I saw him singing there, and I'm thinking, what the heck is this hippie trying to prove? <laughs> and I find that sounds like Randy. That he's the pastor. <laughs> but you know, that sounds like that's Randy. Where my, that was my mindset, right? That as a, a lost soul, you know, but uh, being in there, you know, like what got me there was because I was hungry. I was mm -hmm. thirsty. I was tired. I needed a place to rest. And because we were out looking for a place every day for a month and we stayed in a, we we're so blessed though to have stayed in a, a new shelter and while we were there they you know i felt like now this was god all over the place because we were well looked after there you know they they made sure we had a a room there and so and that you know, being homeless like that was you no know, way. I think, really, I do. I think, you no, know, this was God's plan. You know, this, people might think, what the heck? I don't think God ever wants you to be homeless. But, <laughs> but you know, we one, were homeless one thing for that, a little while. One thing that I have learned in those type of situations, sometimes God, you know, does allow us to go through certain things because now you know how to reach out to those people. Like, I, I, I don't have the knowledge to. I have gone through things that I've questioned. God, why did I have to go through that? Why did I have <laughs> to suffer that? And you know what? Every single one of those things God has used to reach Amen. and touch somebody. And yeah. now you, with that experience that you had, you know what they're going through. You know the pain Amen. that they're feeling. You know their needs and are able to touch. But then, not that long ago, a couple of months ago, just less than a couple of months ago, July 6th, I believe it was, there was that huge yep. fire that took place. Yeah. Fire fire broke out in, right in, the, in a building next to their church. And it spread rapidly into their church building. And it was completely destroyed. And, you know... It broke my heart when I somebody sent me a note. Hey, you gotta gotta get onto the news now. You gotta check the news out. And it really it broke my heart because I know mm -hmm. the love and that was, you know, even though it wasn't an extravagant place or a luxurious place, there was love in that place. And a lot of people's mm -hmm. lives were touched and changed. And then I mm -hmm. saw this picture of you and your husband. You'd been out watching and comforting people from your congregation yeah. and people. All night long. And I mean, you, you're devastated, obviously. This had been your life. And you had recently been set in as the lead pastor. And now you've got all this. Now what do we do? Now where do we go? But one thing, that's why I titled this, Hope is Alive. Because in Amen. spite of all that had gone on, in spite of that fire, hope is alive. And you, you are an example to that, Christina. You know, like this next picture that Jerry had up a second ago. I love it. I love your smile in here. You know, <laughs> you're over at another church's building getting ready to prepare hot dogs because you yeah. still were wanting to serve your people. You didn't have your own place to prepare it, but this other church allowed you to prepare in their building yeah. a couple of times a week. And so you were still able to prepare 
and show these people that we might be out of a building, but we still have hope. There's still yeah. hope for you. There's still yeah, hope that's... for you. Just because mm -hmm. the building's gone doesn't mean that the love is gone. Doesn't mean that our care and concern for you is gone. But what it does mean mm -hmm. is that hope is alive. Yeah. And here they are preparing the hot dogs in that other building. Just like you saw them preparing hot dogs over in their own building, here they are preparing them here. But they didn't have a building to serve it in. So where are they? Out here on the street, mm -hmm. serving the hot dogs. Now, Christina, that's out in front of where your building was, isn't it? Yes. In the in that in that area, general area. Yeah, yeah, yeah right the hot in front. Dogs. And we so used the to people call it knew. the front door service before. <laughs> when, when we're in yeah. the pandemic, I uh, right. spoke with Pastor Randy about that. I said, you know, we weren't allowed to bring people in the building. So I said, M we might as well go out into the street and and ha uh, serve up some food out there. And he thought about it and he said, yes, let's go do that. So we call That's it the wonderful. front door service or <laughs> some food on the street. What the, <laughs> what the people see in you doing this, Christina, is that it wasn't just a job that you were doing, It was, but it was your heart to make sure that their needs were met. And they see that love that you're pouring out to them. In spite of all the difficulties, in spite of all the obstacles, they see how much you are pouring out that love to them. And then I was looking at the tents across the street, right in behind you there. Yeah. And um, that I, I, I was reading something just a couple of days ago, actually, all what's going on with that. And I mean, I mean the city was wanting to remove it for fire reasons. And that's understandable, you know. But then somebody, somebody, and I don't think they know who yet, was passing out flyers that they were going to pour gasoline on the tents and yeah. set the tents on fire and all the people's belongings and anybody that was mm -hmm. there was going to be caught. To me, yeah. you know, they're saying, oh, it's because these people, it's, it's an embarrassment to our town. It's an embarrassment to our city. I'm, I'm sorry, but for me, these people handing out those flyers and saying such evil things that somebody, when they're already down and out, with nothing, yeah. and they're going to set them on fire and set their things. That is cruel, absolute cruelty. That is, that is evil. And, you know, as far as I, I'm concerned, you know, they say that these people are an embarrassment. These people are trying to live their lives the best that they can. And it's more of an mm -hmm. embarrassment what these other guys are doing than what's happening yeah. down there on the street. It really is. Yeah. It's, it's truly a shame. But then there was this legal notice that was given that your building would no longer be occupable, occupiable. Mm -hmm. It could no longer be used. And yeah, that is so uh, sad, you know, because I, I know there was always a hope deep down in some of the people that, well, maybe we'll be able to get it fixed up and get back in there again. But that made yeah. it clear. You're not getting back in here. And no. so here, here you are set up outside of the building. You can't get by that fence. I hope you're going to get that street church sign down. I love that sign. Oh, Wherever yeah, you go, we're, that, we're that, sign's that sign's got to go with you. That yeah, sign's got to go with it. you. That's history. We're putting that it on our history. new building. <laughs> That's right. And um, But, you know, Christina, now, what is it you're looking for in a new facility? What is the need that you have? Go ahead. Well, we're, we're in search of... Uh, we're hoping to get a, a ground level uh, place for for to, to hold our church services again, and um, yeah, we want uh, a little bit not too not right in in that immediate area right now because there's it's it's way too crowded for us, and so we're trying to get maybe. Uh, just a little bit out, not not too far away, you know. We, but that's what we're mm -hmm. praying for. We're praying for the place to be uh, ground level and and things like that because we know well, ground that level most, is yeah because quite, most ground level is quite come, important because a lot of people aren't able to do those stairs that yeah, easily. They, so. Yeah, they have walkers and wheelchairs, and, and there's a lot of walkers and wheelchairs coming up when we first started serving again, like we weren't really, we had no idea what we were going to do or how we we're going to do things. But 
Salvation Army came beside us and they said, come on, we'll help you get back on your feet again. It's like standing us up and helping us to walk again because we didn't miss any service after that. They we done then the following Friday and Sunday right after the fire because the fire was on on a Wednesday night when I did what is now the last service at 175 East Hastings Street Street Church and that really was our last service there. So and the fire broke out that evening and uh you know, it was pretty. It was pretty shocking. Like when we first heard about it, we just got settled in at home after being at the street church all evening, and then I got this phone call from this woman, and she sounded so hysterical. She was screaming into the phone, saying, "The street church is on fire." And I said, what are you saying? And she said, your church is on fire. And I, 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 I couldn't believe what she was saying to me. And she said, I said, you're telling me that street church is on fire? And she said, yes, your church is on fire. And so when I heard those words, I just, I said, just hold on, we're coming down. And we ran all the way down right from Jackson Street to Main Street. We ran all the way down there, and we were met by the police at the corner there where they already had it cordoned off. And I told the police, I said, I am the lead pastor here at Street Church, and I want to know what's going on. And he told me then that the fire had started in the back alley behind, right behind our door, between the door and the store before below us, so that's that's what happened, and and that was about about nine o'clock in the evening because we just got home after eight, and we had let everyone out. We made sure, like that was my my practice every eve, every church night. I would make sure. Everybody left the church, and I would make sure I would do a safety check, make sure all switches were turned off, make sure all doors and windows were locked. That was what I did every time. And so, you know, that's my way of making sure everything's safe. So, mm -hmm. so you was, knew uh, there was at least nobody in the building. At least you knew that. Yes, yeah. Which is so important. Uh, oh, yeah. But so you need to find a building. One on the main floor, you know, the ground level is important. I mean, I I watched Randy, you know, in the last couple of years going up and down those stairs. I mean, it was it was torture for him. And I was thinking the other night, you know, thank you know maybe it's God's grace that you know he did go when he did. He he slept in that room. Who knows whether he would have even been awake or would have been able to get out? You know, only God knows. Sometimes we don't understand God's timing, but he does. So I know that you need a place on the ground level, if at all possible, and you need a place with a good kitchen to carry on your feeding. Those are two things that are really important. And I, I want to challenge any of you that are listening, if you know of a place if you have a friend that might have connections that could have a place that could serve Christina and the work that they're doing. Christina, I'm going to get you to send me right after the program the best way for people to contact you, your phone number, your email address, so they can get in mm -hmm. touch with you directly if they have some way of, of being able to help out. Okay? But I need to put that into the direction, into the description okay. of the program. So I need you to send that to me right away. And in All the right. meantime... If you have something that you can help them with, please get in touch. You can get in touch with me and I can get in touch with you if you can't get in touch with Christina directly. Oh, yeah. It is so important. Oh. It is so important that they get Amen. a place. The work that they're doing is vital in that downtown area. Amen. I mean, yeah, I yeah. walked down there a few times and I talked to some of the people and they all, every single person I talked to said how much they loved and appreciated Street Church. 
how much Amen. it meant to them, how much the work that they were doing meant to them. And they said, one, one guy, he was so funny, he said, I know I'm not easy to work with, but they're always kind to me. <laughs> he said, I know I'm not easy to work with, but they're always kind to me. They always love me. They always feed me. They always yeah. have given me clothes. And so people so appreciate the work that you do. But now it's like when we were looking for a new place in New Westminster, the place that we were meeting, we had to move out of. And the, the secular newspaper in the New West put a big title, homeless or helpers to the homeless. Now homeless could be homeless themselves. <laughs> and that's exactly where you're at right now. You are yeah. in a situation where you're homeless yourselves, but you are mm -hmm. one of the critical helpers to the homeless down there. And there's got to be people that can reach out and help you. So any of you that are Amen. listening, I want to challenge you to do that. But in the meantime, there's a song I'm going to ask Jerry to sing. You know, it's called, I Will Look to Jesus. And it's so, it's exactly what you're doing at this time. Every step of the way, Christina, you're looking to Jesus. You don't know how you can do it on your, on your own. You know that you can't do it. Amen. But with keeping your eyes fixed on him, you know there's Amen. solutions. Jerry, I will look to Jesus, please. Whichever way the world goes Whichever way the wind blows I will look to Jesus and follow where he leads Though storms may rage around me And wars can pass surround me I will look to Jesus And follow where he leads He sees beyond the present To a future resplandescent a day with no more sorrow When all tears are wiped away Though torments have assailed me His love has never failed me So I will follow Jesus Till my dying day Whichever way the world goes Whichever way the wind I will look to Jesus and follow where he leads. Though storms may rage around me and wars come past surround me, I will look to Jesus and follow where he leads. Now I can trust no other. No sister and no brother My father or my mother Unless they follow him Much less some politician A preacher or musician No actor or physician Unless they follow him Whichever way the world goes Whichever way the wind blows Oh, I will look to Jesus And follow where He leads Though storms may rage around me And wars come past surround me I will look to Jesus And follow where He Yes, I will look to Jesus and follow where He leads. I will look to Jesus and follow where He leads. And, you know, like just like that song says, those storms may rage around me. And that's exactly the stormy condition that Christina and her team are living in right now. But they know the only 
solution is to keep their eyes fixed on him because he alone holds the key to their circumstance, to their situation. Christina, come on back in for a sec. Jerry, I'll bring you in. <laughs> so it's been really nice having you with us today and explaining the needs down there in your heart for those people. You know, that's one thing that I see every time I've talked with you or seen you is your heart for the people down there. And you know, that's what's critical. You could have dozens and dozens of master's degrees. You could have all this and all that. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. What's critical is your heart for the people. Amen. And that's what I Amen. see. And the smile that you have when you're serving them and blessing them. It's amazing watching you. I love it. <laughs> but anyways, you know, it's funny. Just before your building, shortly before your building burned down, when I was first trying to get a hold of you and couldn't, couldn't find you, couldn't get a hold oh. of you anyways, I was wanting to talk to you about maybe, because, you know, I've had three years that I've been pretty much out of commission. The last Christmas dinner, Jerry had to go by himself because I had been admitted into the hospital a few days earlier. And I spent almost six months in the hospital. And it's just been less than a month that I had been out of a wheelchair. So I am no longer using the wheelchair and I'm walking with just a cane and all that. So I'm thinking, I'm getting ready. I need to get back in there and do another Christmas dinner. So let's find yeah. out where the new building is going to be so we can do it again. But it's been wonderful oh, yeah. having you with us. And I, I really do pray that people's hearts will be touched to see that need, not only to see the need that you have now, but to see the extent of the work that you've been doing down there Amen. in people's lives that have been touched. So let's just pray before you go. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for Pastor Christina and the work that she's doing down there, the heart that she has, Lord, for the people, the love that you've given her. And Lord, I thank you even for some of the experiences she's had in her life that have helped her reach out and touch these people with so much love. And Lord, I thank you that there are a group of people working with her down there and some of the other ministries, Lord, that have hearts and loves to reach out where no one else wants to reach out, to touch lives that no one else wants to touch. And so, Father, I ask that right now, you see this deep need that they have. You see the request, Lord, for a, a, a new facility, Father, preferably on the ground floor. Not because Amen. that's what they want, but because that's what's needed for so many of the people that are either in wheelchairs or walkers. I remember one of the services that we did down there. I watched one of the volunteers from the street church carry a lady up the stairs because she couldn't get up herself. And their heart, Father, just to meet the needs. But... A ground floor would be so much more conducive Amen. to what they're doing. And Lord, and they need a good kitchen, a kitchen that will be able to do what they need in a far easier manner. A kitchen that will have no problem passing the health regulations, and it will be fit exactly for what you would have them do. Amen. So Father, I ask that you will speak to people right now, people who either have a means that they can help with the facility, know someone that does and can pass it on, or however that they can help out in that area, Lord, that you will speak to their hearts now to spread the word, to get the word out of this vital need in our downtown east side, Father, an mm -hmm. area that has been neglected by so many, an area that has been pushed aside by so many. And Father, I pray for protection right now on each and every person down in those streets. Lord, with those threats that are going out that they're going to set fire, Father, mm -hmm. I come against the, that lie right yes. now. And Father, mm -hmm. I ask for your protection for those people. And Lord, that as much as those ones handing out the flyers say that these ones are an embarrassment to the city, Father, may they see the reality that, that the way their hearts are hardened at this moment and the way that they are acting is more of an embarrassment to this city and offense against you, Lord, than anything any one of those people on the street is doing. So, Father, place your hands upon each and every one of them now and protect them, Lord. And, Lord, I ask that you will give Christina and her team wisdom as to the steps that they should take, steps they need to take to see your will accomplished in them and through them, in your precious name. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Well, thank you, Christine, for being with us. It's been wonderful having you. And hopefully we'll get to have coffee sometime soon. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I've, I've nice just started driving. 
I've just started driving again within the last month because for three over three years I was you know in the hospital and not allowed to drive or in a wheelchair so I couldn't and all this but now I've just well, started driving again so we'll get together for coffee sometime anyways sure. uh, I just want to close now and say that any of you that have been listening and have feel to feel do feel touched to help in some way feel free. I'm going to put all the information in the description as to how you can directly get a hold of Pastor Christina and help with these needs that they have, these desperate needs. And I've been down there, as I said, as you saw, been down there as many times as I could. I taught a course at their Bible college because I love it. I love the, seeing the hunger in each and every one of them, and the hunger for more of, of the Lord. But that is what they're learning as an example, as for Christina, when she was going to the Bible college, she said she had a hunger for the word, to learn the word, to know the Lord more. And that's what a lot of these people have. They just don't know how to go about it or how to do it. But Christina and her team, as well as other ministries down there, are reaching out in ways that no one else can, no one else does. So if you would like to sow into this ministry so we can carry on doing this type of thing, please feel free to do so. And Jerry will put the details up on the screen. And if you want to help Christine out, she's going to give you the de I'll give you her details in the description so you can get a hold of her. But in the meantime, God bless you, and we'll see you next week.